Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Gav aka Baytech and in this video we're going to be playing with the IS200. The basis of this video is we're going to be installing a DIY EFI standalone ECU onto my NA 1GFE IS200 Sport. This should be pretty good. The reason I've gone for this ECU is the standard ECU in these is just completely aged. It, it does my head in. Obviously I do a lot of mapping, I do a lot of ECU installs and stuff like that. And now I've just got an issue where I need to have control of everything and this ECU just does whatever the fuck it wants, basically. Another benefit is obviously future down the line I'm going to be boosting this thing. We're either going to go turbo or supercharge or potentially even put a V8 in it or a 2JZ or any engine I can actually stick in that car. This new ECU will actually run it. So all the standard clocks and everything will all work, the drive-by-wire and everything, even with a new engine with that ECU. Now, naturally, I've not installed this, so you guys are going to be coming with me today, and we're going to be trying to get this beast here into a stock ECU. So, this ECU will work with the standard narrow bands and also the narrow band knock sensor as well, and obviously the drive by wire and have all the control of the standard functions. Um, however, I'll be having a wee play with it to see you anyway, and I've actually bought the wideband um, option with it because narrow band's just a waste of time. You just, it's a complete waste of time. Like, if you guys have been following me in my stories, we've tested this from pump to pump and doing like a couple hundred miles, and I got 15 mile a gallon average. This thing is shocking on fuel. Um, so I've done a throttle body mod in it as well, which I've reverted back to the, the way it should be in factory because this can control it. And I tried the ACIS mod as well. And a couple other mods, even the lambda sensor linking across and using the same lambda sensor for both. But yeah, I've tried a few things. This thing's just absolutely shocker on fuel. So it would be nice to have some sort of control and be able to lean things out in the cruise areas to see if it makes a difference to fuel consumption, which I'm pretty sure it will. Knock control is a cool feature as well, but obviously naturally standard. These are narrow band knock sensors. Again, not worth the paper they're written on. And uh, with them being narrow band sensors, you know, any engine noise or any sort of weird noises, rubbing out the arch or anything, they'll start retarding your timing. And I can feel it mid-range, this thing kind of hesitating back and forward. And I'm pretty sure the thing's pulling timing because it's hearing some sort of weird knock. Although this thing's natural aspirated, and I'm running decent fuel in it, and it's standard timing and stuff, so it really shouldn't be hearing any sort of knock. So anyway, guys, come with me. We're going to have a look in here. This is the standard ECUs in here somewhere. And uh, we're going to go and install this new piece of kit and see if we can get this thing running. So just a reminder for you guys as well, pull off your earth or your positive, I've done a positive, and then uh, have a good look at this monstrosity. I'm just gonna stuck in some weight. <clears throat> so let's see. Oh, we've got a couple of screws. That looks like security Torx pieces. So don't get me wrong. This thing's probably not going to be going back on again. So that's me going to say, I know that was a bit rough, but I just didn't have the Torx bits and I do have a drill, so I decided to whip it off. And let's be honest, I'm probably not going to be sticking this thing back in again anyway, so let's unclip these. These look nice and easy to do. Just push in and pull. <laughs> it's so hard and everything will with one hand. You lose everything, but same thing as I also want to show you guys the true representation of true real life when you actually start to ah, look at this engine control dynamite and if you decide to do the same way as me and then the drill all the pieces out remember there's going to be swarf everywhere so hoover all out or put a rag down or something to try and stop that swarf going everywhere uh, i'm an electrician at the trade so i should know better next thing you want to do is take off all these screws i think these are actually a pz screwdriver um, it's like a Japanese standard, is it not, I think? But I've got one anyway. You could use a normal one. They're actually not tight and they're not thread locked in or anything, so... Look at the standard ECU, eh? Absolute piece of kit. See, this one-handed malarkey. I 
should really get myself a, some sort of uh, some sort of stand or maybe maybe just get good at doing the socials and get somebody to do it for me <laughs> get some guy to come and start filming the stuff instead there we have it standard ECU looks good the first thing I'm noticing here is this one's not used for anything but on this one it is so that's pretty clever what they've done is they've utilized this plug that must be this one here yeah it looks like that's the one so for auxiliary stuff like the wide band and stuff like that I must just plug into there so you don't have to drill any extra holes in here now I'm going to be drilling a hole in here because this thing here has an option for a USB-C which I'm absolutely buzzing about because usually on these ECUs you'll get a connector in like this which is like a printer cable or the really tiny small USB horrible things the old school style but I like these USB-C ones so and this looks like this is an extension which you must plug into here I'm guessing so plug this into here and that'll go out the ECU so you can have it all enclosed and nice and safe and actually communicate with ECU through this extension. So I'll need to message James to see if I'm right or wrong about this. I could be right, could be wrong. Um, but going by this one here, this one looks like it's a, a Hall Effect to VR converter. Sorry, VR to Hall Effect converter. This one down here is a jumper from Knock. So that's narrow band and wide band. Using the stock ones just now, but I will change to wide band at some point. But narrow band, that's the jumper for this one. And I'm taking it for the wide band. AFR must just go to here. That must be separate. I don't think that's got a jumper or such. It's probably in the ECU. So, yeah, looking good. We have a memory card in here as well. I'm going to assume that's for data logging, which is a nice touch, by the way. So, uh, even my fancy ECU doesn't have an expandable memory card like that. So, yeah. Right, the board's good. installed, and I've put this extra wee piece in here, but don't do what I did. There's two holes here, and I drilled straight through one, right? And I used, like, it was a 10 mil piece or something, or 10.5 or 11 mil, I can't quite remember. Um, but when I drilled through, it was too close to this bolt hole, so I've had to, <laughs> I've had to clearance it. I managed to get the wee nut in the back, but I'll revisit this at some point. Um, but, yeah, don't do what I do and drill through an existing hole. Probably drill more, more in the centre, maybe. Or maybe even just on the side here or somewhere else. Somewhere you can get to it. Even on the, the back, you know what I mean? You can put it anywhere, really. Um, but I just stuck it on here because the ECU faces up the way. Plugs on the top, and at least that's nice and easy to get to. But, uh, yeah, just bear that in mind. Take a bit of time and look over that um, while you're playing with it. Because, yeah, don't do what I do. Um, you know, have a wee play with it and see if you can get on without screwing it up right that's now plugged in again you can see my wee nice usb you see that now i need to take off these um wide bands oh, these are actually narrow bands i should say and um, probably be better if i actually put it down where both pipes right together but for now before i go turbo i'll just stick it in this one here these are narrow band sensors they don't really tell you the fr as such it's more just it knows if it's lean or rich so uh, it's not exactly ideal but it does for most applications definitely not turbo or anything like that in my opinion i think you'd be much better off with a wide band wide bands are just fucking sick these this wide band here by the looks of it's either a actually i can tell by this 4.9 it's a 4.9 sensor which is about 10 generations newer than the uh, narrow band but again i'm gonna have to use both hands i think to screw this one in so yeah naturally when i come to do anything my laptop decides it doesn't want to play ball but uh, what i'll do is i'll go and get the charger for the bush so we can see if it starts like my new wheels by the way split rinse sterns the three-piece magnesium japanese right, rarity so plugged it in ignition on We'll go for Tuna Studio. I'm a big Max ECU guy. I love Max ECU. But because this was plug and play, I thought to myself, you know what? This is going to be a IS200. And then you're going to go firmware, detect. And it's going to find the firmware. There it is, accept. And then it'll say, firmware is wrong. Okay, so you click OK, and then you go Other, 
browse and then if you go to this PC from EFI click this one here open and then that's the firmware click next I already exists yeah it's because I fucking made one I just wanted to show you guys how it worked please select a new nickname or oh yeah I need to change it so I'll go to IS202 click next I like Lambda, I don't know about you guys, you might like AFR, but I'm a Lambda guy. Test port successful. Next. Whatever display you want, we'll just go for that one. And oh, will it connect itself? Oh, look at that. And we're online. Oh, yes. Everything's looking good so far. So, just going over this just now, you've got your base settings, uh, trigger setup, um, all your usual stuff. But I don't know if any of you guys have tuned these before, like, oh, you maybe tuned Megasquirt and stuff like that, but this has got so much more involved. Oh, yes, I cannot wait to play with this sort of stuff. Ignition advance, if you're a chav and you want some pops and bangs, make all this minus 25 down here. <laughs> but, yeah, as you can see here, about 100 kPa, 26, 25, 29, 31. So straight out of the box, this is going to run more time in, which is going to make more power than the standard ECU. But we are going to show that on a dyno sometime. Uh, I just want to see if we can get this thing up and running first and we'll have a wee play with that. But cranking settings, right, cool, idle control, idle control stuff. This is another thing I want to play with because the standard ECU idle control is absolutely shocking. So this is obviously uh, PWM stuff here. Um, our coolant temperature vs RPM and stuff like that. We're going to go for advanced. We've got boost control. It's going to be handy. Launch control. Cylinder offsets probably for like timing or fueling. Um, sometimes on some engines you'll find the middle cylinders can get a bit hot. So some people like to increase the fueling in the middle cylinders to keep things cool. So electric throttle body stuff. Sensors. Oh my goodness. We've got all the data here. Oh, wrong one. That's why. Yeah, we've got all our sensors here so you can play with different cool temp sensors intake air temp sensors it looks like we'll be able to change the scaling on this yeah we could change the scaling on this to use a fast acting one uh, we've got controller here what's this oh for sd card loggers and stuff we've got simulations injector test coil pack this remember guys if you're doing uh, ignition coil tests and stuff like that like if it was me disconnect the fucking things because it's very easy to go tit, make these things go tits up three milliseconds that's not too bad iterations off time so this would probably be okay testing your coils um from this but i tend to do it with them disconnected but this looks like it's set up okay and uh, we've got our lambda protection oh nice oh that's cool so we can make a lean cut and stuff like that and we've got our fan control launch control ejector stuff or ejector sizing white band states oh yes all the information these are things i love to play with and that'll be another video on uh, the tuning of this car actually and we'll go over some of these settings that'll be good for you to see if you want to and uh, yeah but what i want to do here is try and get this thing started right, so up. what we'll do is without changing any settings we'll try and crank it and then we'll see what we can see watch this thing fall right onto the deck and destroy itself let's see well we have throttle body control already so that's always a good sign no start yet let's have a look at the laptop yep okay <laughs> so spoke to james and this wee thing i tucked away in here <laughs> thinking there was some sort of extra pins this is your new cam sensor plug here with the new wire and upgrade stuff because the reason for it is because the stacked the factory stuff uses uh, a shared ground which in the ecu tuning world that's not really a good thing it can cause all sorts of interference and stuff like that so um now we just need to stick this into my cam sensor and hopefully it'll start this time okay so the cam position sensor is down here oh there's the old wire in there. Excuse the amount of oil because, well, I won't exactly tell you what happened when I bought the car, but it didn't have an oil cap basically, and the guy used a condom to stop uh, the oil leaking out, which is, which it kind of half worked, but at the same time else, it didn't work because all the oil went all over the engine bay. So let me get the torch on so you can see a bit better. So you can see, oh, wrong way, wrong way. There we go. 
it's just clipped in and I've just got it rooted roughly just now. Don't worry, I will be sorting this stuff out afterwards. This is all just temporary just now. Temporary permanent. <laughs> right. Without changing anything else, let's try and see if it'll start. Right, and it's fixed fixed timing just now because I needed a timing light to make sure to verify, but there we have it. Live. Here. That shows zero, but I have a fixed time at 10, so oh, you bastard! Quick! <laughs> oh my goodness, I get far too excited about this sort of stuff when things start working. So, back in business, the old Lexus, see this bitch will start up the day. Can't wait to have a play with this thing. Chavi we tune <laughs> So a couple of you asked what's the response like with these DIY EFI plug and play CUs and IS200. You'll see what like. <laughs> A drive by wire as well, so it comes back to idle nicely all by itself. <laughs>